you are listening to the podcast Rooting Anti-Racism in the Favelas Deconstructing Social Narratives about Racism in Rio de Janeiro Produced by Rio Watch Hello, I'm Wyatt Perez, guest narrator for today's podcast episode Religious Racism in Brazil We have to talk about it Originally written by Complexo do Alemão's very own Jefferson Rodriguez This podcast episode, along with all others from the Rooting Anti-Racism in the Favela series, was brought to you by the Rio On Watch team. Have a listen and do let us know what you think. We are in a church, one of those that are universal, global, international, but never local. Suddenly, a young man stands up with his hands behind his back speaking in a distorted voice as he walks towards the altar. The pastor asks, who's there? Immediately, a spirit identifies herself. It's Bomba Gira. She goes on to say that she's taking the man whose body she has entered through demonization or possession, to use the usual jargon, into a quote-unquote life of homosexuality. The scene is so familiar in Brazil that we can claim to have seen it in TV, in person, or heard the exchange on the radio. We know that all nations, over time, develop a relationship with what they believe to be sacred. For certain African peoples, elements of nature, such as rivers, are sacred. For some Asian peoples, it has been mountains. In the case of some indigenous peoples, it is found in the stars. For the Messianic Church, it is in the sacred soil of Guarapiranga, a reservoir south of São Paulo. And for Brazilian evangelical Christians, mountains are popular points of prayer and vigil. Some of these sacred names and stories do not even exist anymore, and still others will appear throughout history. Why would only one be correct? And what criteria determine that one religion is right and another one is wrong? I ask my fellow Brazilians, did you know that your religion most likely did not exist until recently? Brazil's religious genesis is based on European Christian colonization. Since the times when the Portuguese royal family fled to Brazil to escape Napoleon in 1808, other religious groups have developed their faiths on Brazilian soil. Such is the case with Anglicans and Cardas Espiritus. Throughout the 19th century, in the central region of Rio de Janeiro, so-called Macumbas Cariocas, a name widely used to refer to religions of African origin, were established. These Macumbas were mainly attended by black and poor people who lived in nearby tenements, or in the first favela, today known as Mojo de Providencia. These Macumbas Criacas became places of spiritual development and cultural resistance to the constant violence imposed on black bodies and what they represent culturally in Brazil. It is important to note that Umbanda, a religion formed at the beginning of the 20th century in the municipality of São Gonçalo, which neighbors Rio de Janeiro, had a notable growth among blacks and the poor, as well as earning a place among Rio's white middle class. As the Pentecostal movement grew, churches such as the Christian Congregation in Brazil, founded in 1910, the Assemblies of God, founded in 1911, Brazil for Christ in 1955, and God is Love in 1962, emerged and were formalized, above all, among the poorest. These churches' strong verbal attack on Brazilian religions of African origin gained traction, causing blacks and the poor to join these religious organizations, thus creating new churches called Neo-Pentecostals, such as the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God, founded in 1977, International Grace of God Church in 1980, Reborn in Christ Church in 1986, and Universal Church of God's Power in 1998. We have mentioned the biggest of Brazil's evangelical churches here. Many others were founded but discontinued, just as happens with other religions that disappear as the culture and people that supported them dwindle. The religions of the indigenous peoples of Brazil and of the American continent are examples of how colonial violence exterminates worldviews that do not contribute to its expansion. That's right. Religion is a manifestation of a specific people's culture. It is connected with them and where they live. Religion is a people's relationship with what is sacred to them, and of this sacred with what is sacred to others. 
Have you noticed that the church on your street is probably different from a church with the same name in another neighborhood at the other end of the city? Unfortunately, we were taught that the truth is in our hands, and this is detrimental to all of us. Can you imagine if everyone thought the same? What a pain it would be to live in this world. Diversity makes our world beautiful and makes each of us have a different priority and point of view. Some people have decided to elect the common enemy to affirm their truth as the only possible truth and have used an existing structure to more easily convince others. I am talking about structural racism. In her book, Plantation Memories, Episodes of Everyday Racism, psychologist Grada Quilomba explains that racism is revealed at a structural level as people of color are excluded from most social and political structures. Official structures operate in a way that privilege their white subjects, putting members of other racialized groups at a visible disadvantage outside the dominant structures. This is what is called structural racism. When we believe that a certain race is better than another, it becomes natural to defend and give preference to one over the other. That is why racism is so toxic. It divides and harms certain groups while giving advantages to others. We all know how the Brazilian state treats white and black people differently. How many white homeless people do we see every day? And how many black doctors graduate from Brazil's public universities? A doctor who believes that white people are better than black people will treat whites with more dignity. A religious leader who believes that one religion is worse than another will teach their followers to fight other religions in order to eliminate them. This leader will deem them heretical practices, black magic, or witchcraft. We have examples of this in the Brazilian legislative branches, where bills are constantly being voted on to hinder the practice of Afro-Brazilian religious worship. These laws confuse and create animosity between society and practitioners of Afro-Brazilian religions. In 2019, the Brazilian Supreme Court ruled that animal sacrifice and religious practices of African origin are constitutional, ending several attempts to criminalize these practices common to Afro-Brazilian religions. The following tweet was posted by Brazil's federal congressman, Marco Feliciano, from São Paulo's Social Christian Party. Africa is descended from an ancestor cursed by Noah. That is fact. Shortly after the negative repercussion of his tweet, he deleted it. But even during services televised from his church, he admits and reaffirms his racist speech as theology. Speeches like these persuade people to perceive practitioners of Afro-Brazilian religions as cursed, less human, or fruits of evil, which makes them vulnerable to all types of violence. In the book, A Conceptual Approach to the Notions of Race, Racism, Identity, and Ethnicity, Professor Gabengila Munanga conceptualizes racism as a belief in the existence of a natural hierarchy of races through the intrinsic relationships between the physical and the moral, the physical and the intellectual, and the physical and the cultural. In other words, we can also understand racism as a belief that certain people are better than others because of their origin or the color of their skin. All this despite the set of characteristics that we call race being built in our imagination mainly through education, science, art, theology, and so on. In a religious context, whenever we see a direct mention to another religion as something negative, we need to ask ourselves the question, who is this benefiting? Certain people have waged crusades and holy wars against a common enemy. The enemy has different ethnic origins, yet has been very well defined geographically. It is from Africa. These enemies also have a color of skin or a color of faith. The victims of racist religious intolerance in Brazil are almost always the sacred black entities of religions brought from Africa. How come you have never seen Shiva, Vishnu, or Thor manifest themselves in these churches? Why are the chosen enemies always from a single religious origin, hailing from a single part of the world? This phenomenon is called racism. And when it relates to religion, it is religious racism. It makes people believe their truth is better than the truth of another. It makes them deem the other and their supposedly demonic and impure beliefs as the enemy. It makes them not question why it is always the same spiritual entities manifesting and being fought and expelled from bodies and church services, always in the name of a white, blue-eyed Jesus. 
racism naturalizes oppression of black people in all areas of their lives, including in their spirituality and faith. Since colonial times, we have observed systematic violence against people of Afro-Brazilian religions, such as Umbanda and Candomblé, including attacks on temples, intimidation when public spaces are used for rituals, or the bullying of initiated children in schools. A clear example of this type of violence was when a young girl, Kailane, 11, was hit by a stone while leaving her place of worship with her family in the North Zone of Rio in 2015. In Brazil, the Ministry of Women, Family, and Human Rights is responsible for the Dial 100 hotline, which registers cases of religious intolerance. According to official Dial 100 data, of all cases of religious intolerance in 2017, those against African-based religions totaled 144, while those against Catholics totaled 31, and Evangelicals 27. In 2018, the most affected groups were, again, African-based religions 147, Jehovah's Witnesses 31, and Evangelicals 23. We must remember that Brazil is a secular country and as such does not officially claim any faith. In addition, discriminating against someone based on their faith is illegal. It is a crime according to Law 7716 of January 5, 1989 and amended by Law 9459 of May 15, 1997. The best way to guarantee one's freedom is by looking after the freedom of others. To avoid major problems, when you feel violated or discriminated against in your religious freedom, gather evidence such as videos, audios, printed screenshots from social media, witnesses of public threats, aggressions, and or slander, among others. And in doubt, immediately contact the authorities. Dial 100. <laughs> I'm Wyatt Perez. Thanks for listening. The author of this episode is Complexo do Alemão, resident and geographer Jefferson Rodriguez. His text was translated by Michaela Ribeiro. And editing and podcast adaptation was handled by the Rio on Watch team. Cover art was designed by Natalia Flores. Theme song, sound editing, and production by B. Smarks, aka Mateo Simões. Organizing on the Rooting Anti-Racism in the Favelas Project by Tatiana Lima. For more reporting on Rooting Anti-Racism in Favelas, go to RioOnWatch.org. There you will find texts, illustrations, videos, and podcasts that together offer a detailed, multidimensional, and intersectional view of how structural racism works in Rio de Janeiro's favelas. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Links are in the episode description. Thanks for listening and see you next time.